Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hobby Lodge. I know what you're first thinking, where did he get this amazing hoodie from? Well, I'm afraid it isn't the beginnings of uh, Hobby Lodge merch. My wife actually got this for me and my kids. It's my birthday today. If you're watching this on the 12th of October when this video comes out, it's my birthday. And this is a uh, hoodie they got for me where they had the logo printed up uh, on the logo. So thank you to them. And uh, yeah, it was a really nice, cool gift. Who knows, maybe one day Hobby Lodge merch. Let me know if you want to see that. Anyway, today I'm going to be delving into my huge pile of Cytronics homebrew games and reviewing not one, but two games. And that's because there are a series of games. Uh, so let's just jump into it and start talking about them. The first one is called Night and Grail. So we'll jump into this one in a sec. But the second one, the follow-up game, and it is a follow-up, uh, is called Pains and Aches. And I'll explain exactly uh, what happens in these games. Um, so... We'll go into the actual boxes, but I'll tell you the story of it first. So in Night and Growl, this is your classic um, Rescue the Princess um, platforming game, right? You play as the knight with a honking great big sword, uh, and you're, you're able to get power-ups throughout the, about the adventure, but you're looking for the Holy Growl. You're looking for this Grail that can uh, rescue you can use to rescue the princess who's been cursed. So you go through the dungeon. It's a bit like a Metroidvania, kind of, where, you know, Different armor sets protect you against different dam damage, and obviously you can't pass certain areas of the game until you get that armor set, uh, but then you've got to work your way back to the beginning maybe to go different routes, and you're working your way around this castle um, and dungeons, you know, killing monsters, uh, f solving puzzles, um, all sorts. So a really cool little game that you play through. The graphics on it are really nice, big chunky graphics. The guy with the sword is really easy to play and navigate. The speed is good, the sound is good, and you'll see some game footage very, very soon when we jump over to the Commodore and actually have a play. Um, but yes, really good game. And, I, and let's go, let's jump inside the box. I always like to show you what's inside. Uh, you can get this, I believe, on both tape and disc. I get the tape, I prefer the tape, that's just me. Uh, inside, here is your disc. So it's your classic five and a quarter inch floppy. Always nicely presented. These guys always do fantastic artwork um, and uh, you know fantastic presentation of their games. Uh, both of these games are from the same creator, called, a guy called Mikael Tillander. I've probably not pronounced that right, and if I haven't, I apologize. But the first one, Night and Grail, came out in 2009, and the second one, Pains and Aches, came out in 2018. Um, so, you know, there's a there's a nine-year difference there in creating these games. I'm just checking I got that correct. I did. So, uh, yeah, really nice little manual in there as well that talks you through the game, talks you through what your map looks like. As you see, the game is quite larger. That's your map to navigate around if you need to. Tells you what the different colors and... Um, different spells and stuff are going to do to obviously you know what the different bosses are etc and there's power-ups in the game you can see those as well so loads of monsters and power-ups you can capture you can get to go to all sorts of stuff going on in this game it looks like a lot of fun and i've played it i haven't played i've played probably about two hours of the game um and uh I've, I've really enjoyed it so far no no problems there whatsoever um really really good plays really well uh the, the platform is really you know really sort of you know snappy and works the jump distances work the the attacking from, uh, uh, sort of combat is really good as well so yeah really happy with how that plays i do think there was something else in here as well oh yes there was there were some little stickers it's always nice when you get little bits of extras so uh <laughs> yeah i like this one because it says i adore my commodore we can't get what wrong uh nothing wrong with that everyone knows i do indeed love the commodore but it's a little bit out of focus but you get the idea there and then there is a knight and grail sticker as well so yeah that's the first one now the second game plays on from the first game so once you've rescued your princess or you know, she, in this she's called the archmaid she is a, a a magical creature or magical person sorry um she then would use the power of that grail to then uh, rule the kingdom you know it's a classic end of the end of the story you know they're gonna take over they're gonna not take over sounds, sounds sinister maybe they are um, but they're gonna rule the kingdom for good um but unfortunately these titans come along and they this time curse her and capture the knight so now you take on the role of the princess uh the archmage she is in in this uh and you have to find a way to get yourself uncursed and become human form again and then battle your way through the levels defeating these titans to get back to your knight uh, to hopefully have a happy ending uh it's again plays different to the first one the first one's very melee focused obviously 
you with your your big sword going around and you're whacking all the creatures uh, in this one it's more spells based uh, they have a she has a pendant that you can attach different gems to to give different powers to um and she can throw you know bolts of fire and whatever depending on, on what combinations you're using uh, to then fight the enemy so a very different play style uh, and again i'll show you that when we go through the footage uh, but but really fun again solid platforming obviously just like the first one um really well played out big adventure play you know adventure area to play in um great platforming um great combat good music and sound so uh, yeah really really good so i'll quickly show you what's inside the box again we've got the lovely manual um you, you expect to see this stuff with these guys right these always always produce a fantastic looking product you can never you can never say they don't the artwork is always top notch all the instructions are in there about the game and how to play um yeah never never have any complaints of course again i got it on disc you can pick this up on tape i believe I do like the discs and i'm not sure if this one came with any little extras no it didn't there's no um there's no uh stickers or cards and again on this time around but yeah i do like these long boxes um these stack really nicely on your shelf uh, and they keep the games in really good condition so uh, really a big fan of these plastic cases they put them in um and i, I do want to try and pick up some spare ones for even non cytronics games because uh just a nice way to store games especially your disc games so uh, yeah look that is the games i'm going to jump over to the commodore now and we'll play some and you can see what they're like we'll give them a chat and then i'll come back and say goodbye all right so let's jump over to the commodore <laughs> okay so here we are at the entrance to the castle in there is monsters and meanies but there's a damsel in distress that we need to go and rescue so this is the knight character you can see i didn't lie he has got a significantly sized chunky sword that he's going to be throwing around and as you can see it moves in kind of an arcing uh, sort of movement so um, that allows you to hit things that may be going up and down and you know you can arc the sword around like a boomerang almost so really cool um you can see straight away i'm gray why is that and that's because i'm wearing iron armor with an iron sword throughout this game i'm going to be picking up different swords and different armors to allow for different abilities uh, the game's tutorial is done through these rocks so you go up to a rock you push down on it and it will tell you what you need to do so in this i need to progress through the castle um, to save the prince to save the damsel the princess the archmage uh, and i have a space bar to get my map and as you can see my equipment iron sword and iron armor uh, the map isn't looking too interesting at the moment because we haven't discovered anything so yeah um great background music the map oh i forgot about this guy let me kill him this door attacks you immediately <laughs> Um, but yeah, the background music does stop and start, so it kind of goes on the loop, but it's not intrusive. It's a nice atmosphere music. Um, and as you can see, so quick description of what's going on here. Um, these are platforms you can go up, but this door is locked and I need to find um, these crystals. Uh, they almost look like um, fortune turning stones to be able to unlock doors. So I can push up and down to go up and down the platforms, and then this snake. And as you can see, this snake is spitting what looks like blue water, like what looks like a water damage type. So if I was wearing blue armor, for instance, that damage wouldn't hurt me. So later on in the game, we'll find some of that armor. But for right now, pretty much everything can hurt me. So we're going to throw my sword out there. We're going to try and kill some stuff and get through the game. But the damage is the color it is for very uh, specific reasons in that different armor types will protect me another door that's locked there which i can't go but that the, the metrovania piece is obviously i've got to go collect bits and then come back on myself to actually go through some of these doors that are locked so we'll keep heading this direction we have nowhere else to go right now these pots contain see that flashing gem that's health so i can and here's one of the keys so this crystal is going to open up a door. There we go. And the reason why that's important is because as I as I progress down this corridor, I'm going to get to the point where I can no longer progress. This jump is too high for me, and there's nothing I can do to get up there. So I've got to go back on myself. So we're going to go back. We're going to not get hit by this snake.
We're gonna keep heading down here to kill these guys. There we go, and then drop down here. This is a door that was previously closed. It's now open. We're gonna, we're gonna dodge all of that. I'm gonna take out the little spinning guy. There we go. Take out all these creatures. And we found another key to un another uh, door to unlock. So again, we have to go back on ourselves to find out where that's opened. So, you know, at this point in the game, it feels quite slow paced, but actually I quite like the pacing of it. It's, it's got a bit of a, you know, mystery about it, exploration. Um, you don't quite know what's going to happen yet. So here we have our first armor set. So here we go. I'm going to pick up the blue armor. You have found the armor of water. So I can then use the F key. So F1 to change my weapon, F3 to change my armor. I'm now wearing the blue armor. And what this means is I can stand under this blue damage, blue dripping water, uh, and take the damage. So now I'm that little bit stronger. I will take damage from anything that's not blue. So um, those green fire would have killed me, but he can't hurt me. I think he still take damage if he touches you. Um, but uh, from the damp, from the actual spit, I don't take any damage. Purple, obviously, this will hurt me. So I'm going to dodge this and keep exploring. We know we opened up a door further back, so we'll keep going this way. Ah, there was no need to do that. I jumped into that. That's okay. We'll find some health at some point. Yeah, so you can, there we go. This 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 door that was previously closed when we started the game is now open, so we can get up here. And we found some health. There we go. So, ah, didn't need to do that. So we know that the blue damage can't hurt me. I wish I hadn't taken that hit. But another locked door, so we can't go through there, so we're going to go this way. Like I say, it's always really hard to convey a game in the short amount of play time you're going to do. Uh, but, oh, well, there's a sword there. And I know I can't get that at the moment. So there's going to be an ability or something I need to click. I'm purposefully not reading these stones because there are spoilers in them. And if you get the game, I want you to read the stones. So I already know what these say, having been through this part of the game. So, um, yeah. So I'll be looking forward to getting that sword at some point. I'll take this energy because I actually did lose some energy. And that's probably and that would have opened that door that was locked to me previously. So I can head back this way now. And uh yeah, go and open this. Here we go. This door's open here. Oh. See ya. Here we go. The new creature type. There's loads of different creatures and uh all sorts of uh, environments to play in. Now I know I can't get up there, so I, well, I can I can sometimes grab onto this ledge here. There was a, there we go. I'm up, but I can't go further than that. I can't make that jump, so that's no good to me. I need to head back. Oh, he's he can be a little bit slow moving you know he's wearing big heavy armor so a big iron armor he's not the most agile of guys but yes my hope is this has given you a quick little glimpse of the game to uh, sort of pique your interest but uh i i really enjoy playing this one uh, and what we'll do now is we will flip over to the other game and give you a look at the sequel which is pains and eight So here we are, 
pains and aches, and as you can see on the screen, uh, our Archmage, our beautiful princess, isn't quite looking right. Uh, cloaked and hooded, disguising herself because underneath she is currently hideous. Uh, at the moment, all I have is a jump action. I have no no attack, no nothing. I can just jump. So we need to we need to get out of this form. Ah, we've met one of the titans immediately. This is right at the beginning of the game. Oh, and I've been hit by the spell. Now, I really struggled with working out how to defeat this guy. Uh, and essentially, all you need to do is listen to the notes and then jump on the sound tracker there the what do you call it musical notes page when it lights up so let's do that now let's wait and jump there we go and there is the magical pendant so we pick up the pendant oh i've transformed into the beautiful archmage so you can see now the pendant has appeared on the screen there, but currently it still can't fire, can't do anything because that pendant is empty. I found a ruby crystal and it's been slotted into the pendant. You can see my character has changed into a red dress and now when I hit the fire button, I have my fire bolt. So now I have a means of attacking. Again, the tutorial for this game is done through these tombstones. I'm not going to show you them, but you would push down and then they would give you information. But um. I want you to play the game. I want you to experience those, so you can see them throughout the game. I don't want to. I don't want to take too much of the uh, sort of surprise away. So we now have a simple fire ability, but as you can see, we're only using half of our pendant at the moment. But yeah, music's good. Um, oh, a little mini boss. Great music, quite a simple one this, just jump the fireball, hit him in the head with the fireball. Nice and simple. Now of course it's always really hard to give you a full look at the game, but I'm just trying to give you some, some, some bits of information about it as we play. This does have loading between worlds. It is very short, unlike the other game where I didn't come across any loading yet. This has a short amount. Um, as you load into different worlds but unlike the other game it's a lot less restricted i've yet to come across like the locked doors there are some locked doors but you can travel quite far in this game without coming across a door um and you get to hard areas of the game so you know it's a lot of backtracking and things like that just as previously that your armor does not work like the previous game. So for instance, I'm wearing the red dress. If I was to stand under that red drip, it would still hurt me. So it doesn't work like that. And uh, yeah, this is, we're doing the same mechanics though, where we want to go around exploring different uh, things. Again, like I said, I'm not going to read all the signs. I've read all these. Oh, I didn't mean to drop down there. That was very silly of me. So yeah, look, so clearly I need something to get across this and I don't currently have anything. So this is essentially a dead end for now. Ah. So it also has the concept of side quests. So you'll find characters to talk throughout the game and they will give you a little quest. So here we go. Well, this one's more I can buy stuff. So I have a hunter, uh, a trowel, a reflection and the weather. Um, Let's buy, um, let's not do anything because I don't want, I don't want you to see anything yet. So we haven't collected much in the way of gold. There we go. We've got it across there. Aha, we've now found our emerald crystal. So what we can do here is we can now see what these different crystals do. So we already know the red crystal does the fireball. If I press F1, the crystals swap place. I've now got my green outfit on and I can do a kind of wavy attack. So that might be more useful for different types of enemies. You can shoot the blobs in this game 
you couldn't do this in the previous one so sometimes if you don't want to get caught out you could always shoot them to uh make your life that much oh i didn't mean to die there i thought that bullet missed me but clearly it didn't the nice thing is if you do die in this game it has respawn points so you'll see this one jumps me to the nearest respawn uh, which is actually um, by the, the hunter that we heard talked about earlier. So here we are at the old castle. Here's the hunter, and he has a quest for me to go and find all the arrows and get them back to him. So I'm now just in a, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a castle a few screens down. If I was to press the space bar, I was in that lower row there. So I would have got here naturally anyway, um, but uh, we just kind of skipped a bit through dying. So yeah, mechanic-wise, good jumping, good abilities. You know, you can chop and change whichever one you prefer to use. Um, you know, they all have their use. Oh, 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 oh. That is the issue with respawning enemies, is that um, if you miss a jump, you have to... Uh... Oh, that was lucky. Again, respawn of enemies. I didn't. I should have jumped there, and I didn't. The music's changed because I'm in a different area of the castle. And this is where I've now left a part, and I'm going into a new part. So there is a short amount of loading between those worlds like i say this wasn't like this on the other game but it is in this i'm assuming because there's a lot more detail and as you can see it's an entirely different color palette for this part of the world uh different music and all of that so it is it is very different this is a uh, the old classic falling wet falling uh, mechanic oh i forgot that one splits when it hits the floor go go into another world so a much larger game it feels like because there is so many different worlds you can go in and as you can see without doing much exploring i went straight into another world and i nearly got hit by an arrow so it looks like the ability to sort of get around and find the environments is pretty uh pretty big but as you can see i have no way oh i can i forgot i could do that yeah i'm learning things already i can make this platform come out so that I can jump and make it across. Oh. So yeah, loads to do, right? I'm not I'm not gonna be able to get it all now. So I reckon I might be better get in the old fireball on this guy. There we go. Oh, <laughs> and then I hit there. So, yeah, um, I'll head back now. We can talk about the games, um, but hopefully you like this quick. It's like a quick look, right? I really can't get too much over in a very short video, um, but great jumping mechanics, great gameplay. Um, the music's really nice. There's a lot of world changing, a lot of different environments. So definitely an evolution up from the Night and Grail game, um, but one I haven't had a chance to spend too much time with because I'm trying to play them in order, right? I want to play Night and Grail first, obviously, and finish it, and then move on to Pains and Aches. Um, but this is the second game in those two, uh, and I hope you like the look of it. Welcome back, everybody. So you just saw a quick glimpse, and it is only a quick glimpse at these games, right? It's so hard to do a 10, 15 minute video uh, where you try and convey you know the entirety of a game to somebody so i hope you saw some bits that made you like the game so yeah you, what i was playing was knight and grail um so that was the, the first game obviously i played with the knight and the sword and then the second one being pains and aches which follows on from the story as this archmage who's uh you know trying to 
tackle these titans and, and hopefully take back over the kingdom that she's lost um i really enjoy them uh, they're games that i can sit and play for some time like i say i'm, I'm playing through night and ground at the moment that's the one i've gotten the furthest into um but and like i said and it's really hard for me to say you know this is the the whole layout of the game because i haven't completed them but what i've seen so far really enjoyable platform a nice pace it's not too crazy it's not too slow it's got a little bit of metroidvania in there if that's your bag um I like the power up system, um, you know, with the knights, the knight and the armor, and then with the with the archmages, the different combinations in the pendant, um, to give different abilities. I think that's nicely worked out. You know, good good little creatures, good sprites. The music's interesting, and you know, adds a little bit of atmosphere to the game. The sound effects are absolutely fine. Uh, so yeah, for me, it's a it's a great platformer. It's a great little platformer, and and with over, I think it says two hundred rooms. Uh, in yeah, so this one's two hundred. This one doesn't say, but I'm going to assume it's similar size in in game. Um, that's a, those are big games. They're going to take you a little while to play, uh, and the you know the ability to respawn when you die. So you have to start the game from the beginning again. And I think there are save points throughout the game as well because I have seen there is a load and save mechanism, um, so you can you can get back to where you were at least, or, or at least to a part of where you were. So yeah, that was uh, Night and Grail, Pains and Aches from Cytronics Games. They sell for $14.99 if you want to buy the premium disc edition, which is one I always get because I really like the way they're presented. Um, there are some slightly cheaper options, so I think even on tape they're like $8.99. Um, and then there is a disc version which is slightly less, but you don't get the you know you just get the disc essentially in a nice in a nice wrapper. Um, but I always go for the premium disc edition because I just love the way it looks. So uh, yeah, that is my next couple of homebrew games. I will definitely be doing more. If you like this and want to see more of this sort of stuff, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. We don't just do this. We do all sorts in here, right? The Hobby Lodge is a place for everything nerdy and geeky uh, and stuff that I enjoy from retro to tabletop to printing to all sorts so uh yeah i hope you do drop by the hobby lodge again sometime uh, and check out another video all right great to see you thank you very much for coming along and i'll speak to you soon Bye bye